it's Reya, and it's time for my book unhaul. Because when I was organizing my bookshelves, I realized that I have a ton of books that I don't plan on reading anytime soon, and some really weird choices that I don't even know why we own them. Some of these books belong to my partner, but we haven't now agreed that we will get rid of some of them, because I want to focus on building a quality collection instead of quantity collection. I've tried to use my library as much as I can. I usually try before I buy, so I tend to actually buy only the books that either I really liked and I want to collect them, or they just don't stock them in my library at all and I don't have any other choice to read them unless I buy them. But I try to limit buying books I haven't read so that I don't amass a huge TBR. But without further ado, let's just get to the unhauling. I have, I have put them into two categories. I have comics and manga and I have miscellaneous books. Some of them are fiction, some of them are not. But I actually like watching people talk about all kinds of books because it really tells you something about that person's character, uh, about what kinds of things they like to read about. So on to the unhaul. First up, we have Nahkakolo by Mikael Niemi, which is a kind of sci-fi pastiche, a kind of satire. And I really don't particularly like this book. I, I think the word that describes the writing style the best is gross. Like, it, it seems that this author really tries to shock you with their word choices and the and their language that they implement in the book in the book and i just really don't like this style of writing at all so this one is definitely going next up is the book of insults by nancy mcphee and this belonged to my partner and i honestly don't understand why we even have this because if you can't insult somebody naturally or look it up how to do it online, like why do you need a book for it? This is this is insane. I just think this is a waste of space. Next up we have a teach yourself origami book. Once again, I find that this is very uh, useful if you want to teach yourself origami, but on the other hand, you can find so many good tutorials online, so I just don't see the point in keeping this anymore. Next, we have Corporate Charisma, How to Achieve World Class Recognition by Maximizing Your Company's Image, Bra Brands and Culture by Dr. Paul Temporal and Dr. Harry Alder. Um, and this has to do with the fact that both me and my, my partner are in a field that focuses a lot on business and understanding business practices. So this is why we have this book. But again, I want to focus more on quality works. Next up is The Change Pact by Paul Strebel, Building Commitment to Ongoing Change, and this is another book about business ventures and how to organize and manage different business programs. And now we are done with the business side of things, let's move on to cookbooks. First up is Depression Era Recipes. I don't think I need to say more. Next book I'm going to unhaul is The Taste of Home, The Busy Family Cookbook. And the last cookbook on this list is Food Cures Breakthrough Nutritional Prescriptions because I used to be really into like kind of homeopathic and uh, natural cures and stuff and I still believe there's merit in like making sure that you eat right and you can actually like have health benefits from food but I'm kind of moving away from this kind of natural mindset and now moving on to fiction, we have Board of the Rings by the Harvard Lampoon. And this is kind of shameful because I don't own a copy of Lord of the Rings, but we have a copy of Board of the Rings. And this has followed me for the past like two moves. Now it's time for it to go. Next up is The Left Hand of God by Paul Hoffman. And this is a kind of weird one. It's about this young boy raised in a monastery and he is going to be an assassin and uh, I have tried to read this 
a couple of times, but I never managed to force myself to stick through it. I've always ended up around the 100 page mark and then given up. And I now don't have any interest in reading it because the rest of the series is out of print or you can have it only in paperback and I have the hard copy edition of the first volume. So uh, I don't really see the point in collecting them because I can't have the same editions. And I wasn't really enthused about the series to begin with so it's time that this should move on. Next up we have comics. First up we have the first volume of, e uh, of Tea House by Emirain. This was a webcomic that's currently uh, stopped its publishing run. They decided that they didn't have time to commit to finishing it. So the creator team behind this comic uh, called it quits. And I really like the first volume. I read it as a webcomic and then when they announced that they were going to publish the first volume, I bought it and I was really excited. But after that, the story kind of started to falter and I just couldn't really get behind it anymore. And it kind of, in hindsight, colored my view of the start of the story as well. So I have a kind of hate relationship with this comic. So I'm, that's why I'm getting rid of it. Next up on my list is Starfighter by Hamlet Machine. This is another comic that I really liked when it started. And then it kind of went off the rails for me. And I couldn't really bring myself to care about anything that was happening in the comic anymore. So I gave up on it and now I don't see the point in keeping this one because I'm not going to collect the rest of the series. So on to the on whole pile it goes. Next up is the Finnish independent comic anthology Seitsemän Veljestä or Seven Brothers, which has short story comics based on the book by Alexis Kivi, Seitsemän Veljestä. And I used to like this a lot, but I've kind, I've kind of grown past this kind of style that this comic has. There's a lot of different kinds of styles this comic book has. And I don't know, I've just really grown over all of them. I don't see the point in keeping this around anymore. It was a very good book when I first got it, but now I just don't know. I've been keeping it around for nostalgia's sake and the fact that one of my friends has a comic in this, but yeah, I just don't find any enjoyment out of it anymore. Next up is Squeeze Wonderful Big Book of Unexpected Horrors by John M. Vasquez. Uh, he's the artist behind Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. And I used to really love his work, but I've really grown past this art style. I also, like, he is also behind Invader Zim, which I really like. Um, I like the animated show. But I don't know, I've kind of grown past this as well. So I think it's time that it go to someone who will truly appreciate it. Maybe my sister will take it. And on that note, I also have Johnny the Homicidal Maniac by John and Vasquez. And as I said pre previously with the Squee book, this is just in a style that I don't really enjoy anymore. So I don't see the point in keeping it around. Next I have Roman Dirge's Lenore and I used to enjoy this a lot. This is kind of like in that similar John and Vasquez style uh, and it's very gothic. It's, it's a theme on this video that I've grown past all these comics. Next up is Five Very Good Reasons to Punch a Dolphin in the Mouth by The Oatmeal. And I actually really like The Oatmeal still, but this book has so much water damage that, it, that it's actually influenced the artwork in the book. So that's why this is going, even though I still really enjoy Old Mill's humor. And I'm thinking that I want to buy another edition of this that will look good on my shelf, because this one is... It is very damaged, unfortunately. And final Western comic on the list is Nemi. I haven't enjoyed Nemi in a long time, and I won't be continuing on with the series, so I'm getting rid of this. Moving on to manga, I have the first two volumes of K-On! by Kakifly. And yeah, I'm just not really into Moe anymore. Like, not at all. Moe, Moe was not really my thing to begin with. I think Moe is one of those things that you either love or you hate. And I was, I was kind of in the middle and now I'm beginning to go to the other extreme of hating it. So yeah, these are gonna go 
Next up, I have the first volume of Ruroni Kenshin by Nobuhiro Watsuki. And I used to love this series so much. I still enjoy it a lot. I especially loved Kyoto Arc and I found a lot of enjoyment out of this series. But I just don't see myself collecting the whole series. Next up I have the first three volumes of Astro Boy uh, in the Finnish edition. And I kind of want to collect the English celebration editions of Osamu Tezuka's work. I just don't like these particular editions, they look very cheap. I just don't think these editions represent what Astro Boy is all about. So I'm thinking I'm going to find some prettier editions for these. Next up is Venus vs. Virus by Atsushi Suzumi. And this is a gothic action story uh, with some horror themes. And this is also very moe. So it's basically about pretty girls fighting each other. And it is just not a series I enjoy anymore. Next up I have the first two volumes of Months by Naoki Urasawa. And the reason I'm getting rid of these is because Wiz Publishing decided that they will not publish these editions anymore. And they instead moved on to the omnibus editions that I have started collecting. But I need to get rid of these because I don't see the point in keeping them because I'm collecting it in another edition. I was kind of disappointed actually because I had just started collecting this series when the omnibus editions were announced. Mm. Next I have the volume 1 and volume 1 of Emma. I have the Finnish editions and the English edition here. And I'm getting rid of these because first I don't need two sets of volume 1. And because I want to collect the hardcover editions of Emma. Because they would look very nice with my hardcover editions of Kaoru Mori's Bright Story. Next I have volume 1 of Oh My Goddess by Kosuke Fujishima. I used to really like Oh My Goddess. I liked the movie, I liked the TV show, I liked the manga as well. But I, it had some interesting mythology and I, I found it really interesting. But I have just really grown past this series and... I don't think these editions are particularly appetizing and I don't see myself collecting another series that's presently, I think, on hiatus again and has a set of volumes to be counted in the tens and dozens. So I'm not ready to commit myself to collecting such a long series. Next I have Bleach by Kubo Tite and Oh man, I used to really love Bleach. Like, it was one of the first manga fandoms that I really, really got into. And then the story just kind of unraveled and went into a direction that I don't think Kubo even wanted to really go. He just wanted to play fashion designer and design new uniforms for weird reasons. And that kind of guided the story along and it... it it became such a mess. So I really have no intention of collecting Bleach. I didn't even finish the series because it was so bad in the end that I couldn't bring myself to care about anyone. Next I have the first volume of Rebirth by Wu. And you can't really get these editions anymore because Tokyo Pop went under and I don't think anyone has picked up the license for Rebirth after that. You can only like get it from eBay. I don't really have enough passion for this series to go the extra mile to, to purchase all the volumes. And finally I have the third volume of Asumanga Daio. And Asumanga Daio is one of those series that I actually think works better as an anime adaptation. I have tried to get into the comic and I just really can't. But I think the anime is pretty funny. I'm not into gag manga in general. So this one is going to the unhold pile because of that. A few moments later. So after filming the first part, I realized that I completely forgot to talk about this pile over here. So let's do that right now. First up is The Red Dragon by Thomas Harris, who has written The Silence of the Lambs. And I don't see the point in keeping a book that is from the middle of the series because I have no interest in collecting the rest of it. And then next up is a series I am truly ashamed for owning and that is Okaneganai by Toru Kosaka. And these are the first 
five volumes. And this is an R-rated yaoi series which centers around the fact that the main character is sold to this guy. And they're trying to sell it as a love story. When I was in my teens, when I first visited Japan, I was like 20 and I, I had liked this series back then because I was young. I bought it immediately because I was like, oh my god, I, I want it. I want it in Japanese so I can read them uh, as a practice run. And first of all, that was a stupid idea because these don't have furigana. So it's it's a struggle to read them. I have really gotten over Toru Kosaka's um, drawing style in in the later years because just just look at these like this could be a child he isn't but he looks like he's 12 and that's kind of upsetting to me now and i kind of can't get behind the fact that we're supposed to be rooting for this guy even though he is coercing ayase to be with him and he can't leave because he's a slave uh, and I I used to really love this series and now I just can't get over how horrible the premise is and how the art style is not really <coughs> all that pretty to look at. <sighs> but I still have some fond memories of this back in the day. Just not right now. So this is going far, far away. And next up I have some doujinshi from fandoms that I'm no longer in. First up I have these two doujinshi anthologies from Bleach. And as I said previously, as I unhold the volume 1 of Bleach, I have really grown tired of this series and don't really ever see myself picking it up again. And even though I really love some of the fan art that's in here, I just, I just don't love the series and the characters enough to care. Next up I have two doujinshi anthologies of Katekyo Hitman Reborn and I was not really in the fandom when the series was going. Like I didn't really follow the manga much and I didn't watch the anime but I really liked the characters and I saw a lot of fan art, from, fan art of them so when I went to Japan I picked these up and I was really excited about these. Because I wasn't really in the fandom, I couldn't bring myself to love them very much. So these have been just collecting dust on my shelves. Next I have these two doujinshi of Irohani Hoheto. This is another series that I liked when it was airing, but I have just grown past it. Like I still think it's a pretty solid series up until the finale. It has some of the best soundtracks I have ever heard in anime. But I just don't really care about the series anymore. I'm hoping that someone who still likes the series will enjoy this. Next up I have this I Shield 21 doujinshi by Toru Kosaka. And it's going away because I don't really like Toru Kosaka's drawing style. Even though I'm still in the I Shield 21 fandom and I have a few, of, few other doujinshis that I'm still keeping. Next up is this classic Sasunaru doujinshi of Naruto. And Naruto is another fandom that I am no longer in. It is another series that was pretty solid and had, had, had some really nice world building and characters uh, up until the rescue Sasuke arc, after which the series kind of plummeted in quality. And Kishimoto kind of forgot that he had a that he had a nice roster of interesting side characters and the series became all about Sasuke for a while who is the least interesting character in the series in my opinion and it just kind of fell apart which is a risk that you take when you're running a long series that spans over what 40 volumes but yeah um, I'm just not in the fandom anymore so I'm going to get rid of this one and finally I have these Doujinshis of Bleach, different pairings, there's Kira Ichimaru and then there's Ulkiora and um, oh my god I don't even remember his name but Ulkiora and the other guy and then there's Byakia and Renji and another Kira Ichimaru, this one is Ukitake and uh, I don't remember anymore what's the name of I think was it the ninth or eighth 
team captain, the, the one with the beard, anyway. As you can see, I'm no longer up to date on Bleach anything. As I mentioned previously, this is not a series I'm into anymore, so these dodgences are all going. Yeah. And there you have it. Now I'm actually done with all the books that I was going to unhaul. And if you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And tell me about all the books that you have unhauled recently, you're planning to unhaul, or if you're just very embarrassed to have owned the books in the first place. As you've, as you've seen, there's quite a bit of embarrassing books on this list. So, I will see you in the next video. Bye! Thank you.